Connect 200 Joe Reddington Sr. Memorial Sled Dog Race is in memory of Joe Reddington Sr., who was an American dog musher and kennel owner, also known as the father of the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race. He was a 15-time Iditarod finisher. Joe ran the first dog team expedition to Mount McKinley with a summit of 20,320 feet in 1979. During his decades as a homesteader in the Alaska bush, with a kennel of 500 dogs, he mushed more than 250,000 miles. He brought the sled dog back by overseeing the organization and fundraising of the first 1,100-mile Iditarod in 1973. He then lobbied Congress to designate the Iditarod Trail as a National Historic Trail. Joe Reddington competed several times with a high finish. At the age of 71, he finished fifth. The father of the Iditarod competed in his last race at the age of 80. Joe enlisted in the United States Army in 1940, and after his enlistment, he joined the Infantry and Field Artillery Jump School. He became part of General MacArthur's Special Assault Troops in the Pacific. He was discharged from the Army in 1945, and in 1948, he moved his family to Connect. Joe started his own kennel and worked with the United States Air Force providing rescue reclamation service for military members and wrecked aircraft in locations only reachable by a dog team. The Iditarod Trail was originally used by Native Alaskans for hunting and travel to various villages. The trail was cleared in 1908 by government employees, but it wasn't until 1910 that gold discoveries were found in Iditarod in Otter Creek, which is now known as a ghost town. Ruby, Ophir, Flat, Nome, and Elim, and other villages used the trail as a means of supplying miners and settlements, with mail and supplies delivered by dog teams. The final construction of the trail was in 1912. So in conclusion, Joe Reddington had two reasons for organizing the long-distance race. To save the sled dog culture in Alaskan Huskies, which were being phased out by snow machines, and to preserve the historic Iditarod Trail between Seward and Nome. Historic Iditarod Trail now being opened back up. It's probably the first pooch that's run down it, actually, right there. <laughs> that's Esadawa. be on the team this year. As you look behind us, you can see where it's crossing over to our, our property, and they're grooming the, uh, the hill right now so to make the egress not quite as steep. So we'll come right through here, across this ridge road, right onto the Seven Mile Hill Sanctuary. That machine you see right there in the front that brush hog is uh, going to be grooming the trails after we get up over this hill, going down into the swamp. And then, of course, from, from this place, we can leave our property, which is on top of that hill, come right out through here. And if need be, Robin, if she gets had enough of me, she can keep on going to Nome. <laughs> <laughs> There's my Yessie! There's my Yessie Dawa! <laughs> That's his kid right there. I'm That's my bubble girls. That's right, his little baby kid, huh? My little baby, yes, a little baby because... What a great job. Yeah, uh, I gotta so, tell you, we're not here to advertise or anything, but, you know, working with the Iditarod Trailblazers Committee and being invested into the uh, Iditarod Club, the, uh, working with the commission and the borough and having the privilege with the state of Alaska to allow us to open these trails back up has been... Uh, truly a blessing uh, and K and H uh, right here this is part of it this is their equipment K and H is a professional company they did a professional job and uh, hands down uh, we're, we're thankful to have them here uh, taking care of this work here they come down that hill so, which is our property from this this from cat here, yeah this on the road this cat that's coming right. down the hill now this is a d5 and it's uh it's, uh, it's been 
It's still quite a quite a little bit of a, a slant. I'm not sure why they haven't pushed more down uh, from the top, but as you can see, he's uh, he's taking it down little by little. He's got a lot of grooming and, and filling in. There's still a void, so we're we're, we're grateful for it. This year is going to be it's going to be a wild ride. Uh, this is all going to be new, not just to us, but uh, the mushroom community, the four wheelers, snowmobiles, uh, the hikers, the snowshoers, the ski jores. Uh, I mean, even the people that just want to, you know, walk, you know, and, with snowshoes and hiking. Uh, the bikes included, and uh, this is uh, this is just the start. We'll be able to go right from here to Wasilla in time. So, uh, you know, it's a 50 minute drive by vehicle. Probably take us six, day, six hours or whatever it is all day long, for all I know. But uh, we'll be able to do it if we choose to. Have a blessed day. How are you doing, Barb? I I took a log out, uh -huh. but I got the limbs now. I'm kidding.
Fishing nine, Gate Harvin. Finishing eight was David Hasselhoff. Hey, thanks for uh, putting this race on. It was a, a pleasure. I'm happy that we were able to run it this year. So. Finishing in seventh place from Cal Keaton was Anya Rodano. Finishing in sixth place, Katie Wilcox. I just want to say thank you to the organizers, board members, volunteers. It was an amazing race, and I'm glad it happened again this year. Mm -hmm. Sportsmanship is voted on by the muckers. So the 2022 Sportsmanship Award is this chainsaw, the Bruce Bruce Braden Sportsmanship Award, which was donated, sponsored by his wife, Kit Braden. But this award goes to David. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not sure what I did for this, but uh, it'll, it'll actually go to good use in opening trails every year, so uh, so we can all run dogs. Yeah, like, well, maybe not tomorrow, but we'll have to see how it works in 20 below. Uh, thank you. Bruce Layden lived here in Connect and was a musher. He came from Texas because of mushing. He and his wife, Chip Braden, were very active in the Kinnick 200 races. And sadly, he passed away, I think, 2017 in a house fire. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is named after The 2022 Humanitarian Award that the humanitarian recipient will receive $500 from it's the Dream and Dream Humanitarian Award donated by Vern Walter and Richard White. So this one um, is from, <laughs> from the veterinarian uh, recommendation. We saw you guys at the start, a little bit at the halfway point, and then at the finish. Um, and for the 100, uh, you have with Dane Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Finishing in fifth place from Eagle River, Alaska, Matt Pavecchio. Three hundred dollars. Uh, Marv and Emily, thank you. Uh, Kathy, dogs are awesome. I can't wait to uh, see what they can do this year. Finishing in fourth place from Connect, Alaska, winning four hundred and fifty dollars. Eric Kelly. <laughs> Thank everybody for uh, putting the race on. Um, a lot of hard work to get the great time on track. The culvert was awesome. The trail was windy, but I really actually enjoyed the wind. Finishing in third place because I know this kid's because he was this big. Woo! Woo! Josh Armstrong! Yay. 
Uh, <clears throat> thank you everybody for putting this on. Uh, definitely a fun race. Uh, haven't been in it for a while, so it's good to be back on the runners. And what a good race to uh, start off in. Good to be run, right? <laughs> uh, no, it was everything uh, I could have wanted. Thank you for everybody who helped. Handlers, uh, the trail was great. So, thank you. Okay. Finishing in sixth place from Nanana, Alaska, Walter Robinson. Uh, I want to thank everybody that put the race on. Uh, first time running this race down here. Uh, yeah, I had a good time. I'm meeting you folks. We're on the trail. Thanks everyone for putting up. Bud Smith 2022 Sportsmanship Award, which was donated by Grady Smith and Bill Oh, I'm sorry, Al. <laughs> this year's award, like Emily had said with hers, and that it's all voted, the Sportsmanship Awards are all voted by the mushers themselves. That. Now, these guys did great this year, the 200 and that, I mean, they went through hell. Um, so, without further ado and that, I mean, everybody has some good stories, but this year it was voted on for Wally. Yeah. So I guess I'll uh, say a few words. Uh, so I think about the name uh, Bud Smith. Uh, I ran a race, uh, I guess, 20 years ago. Uh, up in Willow with uh, Bud Smith and Tony Rose put it on. Like a mentor race where they kind of talk to each other. Like, you know, like, got to know Bud well. And got some good stories. Taught me a lot. So. I want to thank the Smith family for going in. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and I assume I'm giving for, for helping out with uh, some folks that were in trouble with some water flow last night. Uh, to me, it's pretty simple. You see somebody in trouble to help out. Especially with water flow. It was very cold last night. Uh, the interior gave out the floor. Yeah, uh, you, humanitarian award. Voted on by our veterinarian, Margaret. She did an excellent job. She had to take care of both the 100 and the 200, and that high spirit the whole race. Uh, this year's winner is Travis Field. Thank you. Finishing in fifth place, winning $1,000 at 100 feet from Connect. A lot of thank yous for saying. Finishing in fourth place from Nanana, Alaska, Eddie Burke. $1,500. Thank you to the Connect 200. Really thankful to uh, be a part of the program. Thank you to Wally. You helped me out tremendously. So uh, I was stuck in the overflow for the bad single day. He got me through it. So appreciate it. And uh, congrats to all the mushers. It was, it was fun. That's for sure. Finishing in third place, winning $2,000 from Nanana, Alaska, Aaron Burmeister. Yeah. It makes that a real special place in my heart. I, as a teenager on, I grew up here. I told the five people in this room in these two ways today. Julia, Ray, Reddington, Bert Simcoe. And Brian Hanson. We'd all race the junior. I did run every year growing up. So going out this trail holds a really special place. And starting out here, I can like there's a lot of history for me. It's gone back close to 15 years. And, uh, my first eight Iditarods, we started either in Connecticut or Wasilla and ran right through here every year. And uh, it's been 10 years since I went on these trails. After we have to go out there. I was wondering where we were at, nine mile hill way, because there's like boats going up and over. Trail on 
Burma Road now instead of bouncing off trees all the way through it. You're on a dozer with trail going down it. And then you got a, instead of sliding sideways, dragging across Burma Road, now there's a tunnel to go through. I mean, it's uh, a lot of history, but a really enjoyable ride going through it and just seeing the change. Being down here and being part of such an awesome organization is really, really special. Again, we get so big thank you to everybody for being here. It's great to see old friends and have uh, everybody back. Also, a big thanks to my son Hunter for traveling to the race with us and Roy, his wife Alyssa for uh, chauffeuring him around at the checkpoint so we had extra help along the trail and keep things going. Thank you. Finishing in second place from Seward, Alaska, winning $2,500, Travis Beal. <laughs> Finishing in first place, winning $3,500, Nicholas Petit from Big Lakes. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for all the work that was put into the trail. You can tell. You, you saw how many trees were across the trail, so you ran that trail. Somebody <laughs> cut those things out of the way recently because they weren't across not so long ago. Somebody really worked a lot on that, for sure. And uh, thanks for all the effort on the big old little hole. <laughs> thanks for the effort, you know. Um, thanks for everybody who's had any part of helping any much or any of And I want to say before he gets this trophy, John and Katie from Arctic Chiropractic, um, they were last minute sponsorship to me in a 200 last place in this race will receive a $500 check sponsored by Arctic Chiropractic. Oh, how nice. Thank you, everyone. Robin and I would first like to thank God, the creator of heaven and earth, for his blessing over all that was done this past season and for all that he will do in the future. We would like to share our appreciation to the Iditarod Trailblazers and volunteers to bring this about, and to the Reddington family for their assistance and dedication to keep Joe's vision alive, which is to save the sled dog culture in Alaskan Huskies and to preserve the Iditarod Trail between Seward and Nome. Thank you very much and God bless.